The media exposed themselves as dishonest psychopaths this week to anybody paying attention, whether it be Twitter and Facebook blocking links to a news story that was unfavorable for Joe Biden, showing clear bias, or to Democrats freaking out at Ice Cube for trying to work across the aisle, and then Don Lemon trying to say the ADOS movement, American Descendants of Slaves, is somehow Russian bots. Some slaves. Again, be careful who you align yourself with because this ADOS, uh, African descendants of slaves, um, a lot of Russian bots, a lot of bots online targeting, doing the dirty right. work of Russia uh, for that. And this is what they do. Russia, Russia, Russia. Oh, you like Trump? You're Russian. Oh, you're Ice Cube? Russian. Everything's Russia that we can't control. They're such liars. Hopefully Ice Cube woke millions of people up that never realized this before. But perhaps the most biased and insane thing of the week was the town hall in which Savannah Guthrie asked 43 questions compared to 10 questions from the people at a town hall. And keep in mind, a town hall is where citizens are supposed to ask questions and finally have a platform. This Hill reporter breaks it down perfectly. Yeah, took a lot of notes. Uh, you know me. And last night, look, you had on one station, ABC, Joe Biden. You have George Stephanopoulos as the moderator. Stephanopoulos, of course, a one-time senior advisor to President Clinton. And the word that I kept going back to was amiable. Then on NBC, you have President Trump on there, moderated by Savannah Guthrie, whose husband was a former chief of staff to Al Gore's 2000 presidential campaign. We can't seem to find anybody to do these things that don't have some sort of connection to the Democratic Party. But regardless, uh, I came up with antagonistic as my word that kept coming up over and over because you had a debate moderator, in this case a town hall moderator, who served as a sparring partner in making the show about herself. And let me share some numbers with you. I went through the transcript, Ainsley, 43 questions by Savannah Guthrie to President Trump. That doesn't even include all the statements that she made during it as well. You know how many questions the audience got to ask? You know, the whole reason we were having this event, a town hall, 10. 43 for Guthrie, 10 for the audience. Also, for the first 24 minutes of a one-hour event, Savannah Guthrie was the only one asking the questions until an audience member was finally allowed to do so. So look, Savannah Guthrie was there not to inform voters in this case, but instead to pacify NBC employees who were mad that the town hall was even being held in the first place and Hollywood celebrities, a hundred of them who even wrote a letter saying that this event cannot go on, Ainsley. So it was a farce as we probably expected because this is the movie we've seen over and over again during these town hall debates. First of all, whether it be Facebook or these debates, you can't turn and find somebody that isn't a Democratic operative or somebody with a Democrat past with a clear Democrat bias. This just shows you who blue check marks celebrity elites are in these media journalists. They think it's all about them. They hate you. They don't want to give you a voice. When it's your day to have a voice, they make it all about them. 43 questions by Savannah Guthrie to President Trump. That doesn't even include all the statements that she made during it as well. You know how many questions the audience got to ask? You know, the whole reason we were having this event, a town hall, 10. 43 for Guthrie, 10 for the audience. They turn a town hall into a debate, completely disrespectful not only to citizens but to the president. Let the people answer questions. But if you have a mind of your own and you think for yourself and you don't just blindly follow media mind control, they'll just call you a Russian agent or something. Like, Everything's Russian that doesn't agree with us. Let me ask 43 questions at a town hall. Let's keep in mind there was supposed to be a second debate that they canceled after Steve Scully, who was a Joe Biden intern, got caught talking to anti-Trump Scaramucci openly on Twitter. Twitter. He lied and said he got hacked because he was embarrassed that his bias was exposed for the entire world and probably because it's a crime to fake a hack. Eventually he had to admit that he wasn't hacked. If C-SPAN can't even keep unbiased, you could just imagine what's happening at NBC News. And the audio is completely horrible. Listen. Because sure. there's a little bit of a, I guess, confusion about this, and I think we can clear it up. Yeah, and there shouldn't your, be. Your first positive test was Thursday, October 1st, okay? Mm -hmm. When was your last negative test? When did you last remember having a negative test? Well, I test quite a bit, and I can tell you that before the debate... How is the audio so bad at a major network? Were they purposely sabotaging Trump, or did somebody just suck at their job? Either way, I couldn't find a single article talking about this. One of the biggest town halls of the year, one of the biggest news networks, completely screwing up the audio to make it hard to even listen to, and they don't even have to explain themselves? As long as they could drag Biden across the finish line, they don't care how much they lie, how biased they are, how many times they supersede the voice of the citizens to make it their 
their own voice. Oh, but she did a good job debating the president. It's not a debate, it's a town hall. It's not an interview, it's a town hall. She's supposed to be hosting a town hall for citizens to ask questions. Joe Biden got a softball town hall that was probably all rigged in his favor. They rig all social media, they rig all mass media, they rig all the late night shows, they rig Reddit, they rig Google. Facebook and Instagram are now getting rigged with fact checkers who are basically Democratic Party PR teams who don't care about the facts or science. They care about being a PR team for politicians like Joe Biden. They rig everything, hoping you can't use your own brain. This is like 1984 Orwellian artificial intelligence takeover of humanity. And a lot of people still don't see it. Remember for months they told you not to go to your business or not to have a gathering, even at a certain point, not to go to a beach or an outdoor park. But it's okay for the Women's March. You're not gonna hear much about it from the media because they agree with the Women's March. So it's okay for thousands of women to meet in the streets of DC. What are they doing? Only trying to sabotage a woman who earned her way to the Supreme Court because nothing says women's empowerment like trying to stop a woman from getting to the Supreme Court. If you talk to honest women, they'll say nobody's meaner to women than other women. Of course, not everybody, some get along, but this idea that men are the biggest threat to women and they're just so nice to each other all across America, they're all just helping each other out. That's all you see. It's a total lie. But don't you run your business at full capacity. I mean, Amazon will make money, Facebook will make money, the Washington Post will do well because the same guy who owns Amazon owns Washington Post, but don't question the science of the virus. Unless you're liberal, you can do a gathering and they'll lie and say that Amy Coney Barrett is somehow a bigger threat or something than the virus. You know, George Floyd riots are okay because the threat of racism is bigger than the virus. So what's the science of the virus? Whatever they say, wear a mask, don't wear a mask, it's this, it's that. You can't agree with them, you can't disagree. With them. You're not allowed to literally do anything. Just sit there, wear a mask, and let them go back and forth, shoving you indoors and not letting you go outside, and then a few weeks later, shoving you outside and not letting you go indoors. But don't question it. Only a conspiracy theorist would do that, as Don Lemon and all these media hacks call everybody Russia when they're not intellectually honest enough to debate them or have a conversation with why someone like Ice Cube might be working across aisles. They think they own you. The Democrats think they control everybody, and they freak out when anybody takes a reasonable stance. And before I go, one of the sneakiest things that the media has done recently has tried to get Trump to condemn militias. If you read the Second Amendment, a well-regulated militia is the right of a constitutional American. There's nothing wrong with a well-regulated militia. In fact, they're necessary. So Mitt Romney, the phony hack, I condemn conspiracy theorists and militias. Why do they keep tying in militias? You have Trevor Noah, militias. And perhaps the sneakiest of all, Chris Wallace, said Trump, do you condemn white supremacy and militias? But are you willing tonight to condemn white supremacists and militia groups yeah. and to say that they need to stand down? It's like, do you condemn white supremacy and the First Amendment? It's like tying two things together that are totally different because they want to crush militias. They don't want people to have the freedom of speech. They don't want people to have the right to bear arms or have a militia. They don't want any of that. They want you completely powerless. So when they treat you like a slave, like they're already doing and take away your social media and take away your money and take away your job and force you to wear a mask and not allow you to open your business as their business friends are taking over. As this is all happening, they don't want you to speak freely and they certainly don't want you to be able to defend yourself. So they're trying to manipulate conversation to make militia a synonym with movements that it has nothing to do with. This is how sick these people are. It's not random. It's totally calculated. Just like the Me Too movement. God bless women who are real victims of horrible things. But a lot of this stuff is just a ruse to manipulate your emotions so you don't believe in the right to a fair trial anymore. The media wants to be the trial. They say, you're guilty, Brett Kavanaugh, because we don't like your politics. You're guilty, Amy Coney Barrett, because we don't like your politics. One of these unhinged psychopath Democrats actually asked her about sex Actually assaulting men. Since you became a legal adult, have you ever made unwanted requests for sexual favors or committed any verbal or physical harassment or assault of a sexual nature? No, Senator Hirono. Have you ever faced discipline or entered into a settlement related to this kind of conduct? No, Senator. It's like anybody that we don't like, we're just gonna say is a sexual assaulter. And if they had it their way, you wouldn't have the right to a fair trial. So all of their little ruses, all of their little fake social justice movements are a way to destabilize humanity, subvert humanity, and completely destroy the constitution under the guise of freedom and justice, when in reality, the last thing they want is freedom and justice. And they don't believe in equality. They want you to be equally poor and equally enslaved, but they don't wanna share their money or their power. They don't follow the same COVID rules that you do. 
those are for you. Equality for you, equality at the bottom tier. And for them, they get treated like kings and overlords only to scream and cry victim when you notice what they're doing. You can't talk about it. You can't defend yourself against it. And these are the sick little games that they play. Well, God bless you. God bless your family. I appreciate you. If you like these hats, the God is great hats are available on dreamrare.com. My white God bless hats are temporarily sold out. They're selling like hotcakes. So if you want one, you're going to have to wait a little bit to get one. I have these shirts to fight censorship, these long sleeve ones. And I have this one is thinking illegal yet. I honestly think it might be. And that's a way to support as well as patreon.com slash rare talk. If you like my videos, I appreciate everybody supporting there. And I answer all messages on Patreon. Just be patient. If I haven't, I will. And since I get so many messages on Facebook and Instagram, patreon.com slash rare talk is the place that I answer all messages. So that's the perk of Patreon. I can't do that much because I'm so busy, but I do answer all messages there. And I appreciate the kind messages I got. Thank you guys so much. Have a beautiful day. I hope you like this video. I'll be back with more soon. I just make another deal. You don't understand the system. Yeah, I'm about to paint a picture. Yeah, media control the mind and censor everything that ever goes against them. Yeah, why they pin you as a victim? Yeah, so you always stay dependent. Yeah, then they tell you they gon' raise the taxes, help you out with everything you